Hello and welcome to this short series on how to draw battle maps with Tom Cartos. That's me. Hi. Hey everyone. After my last series of videos, I had a bunch of comments asking how I create curved walls and floors in my battle maps. So that's what I'm going to go over today. You can see I've got a sketch laid out here with a few different shapes on it. I'm going to go over four different methods of how you can create these kinds of shapes on your battle maps. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, we're working in Photoshop to create battle maps for TTRPGs. And I recommend you go and watch the introductory series first. You can find a link to that in the card at the top of the screen or in the description below. Option number one, the elliptical marquee tool. This is going to be your most basic option, but it's also not going to give you a whole lot of sway if you want to do more complex shapes. So what we're going to do is go up to the top of our tool panel and we're going to grab the elliptical marquee tool by holding down and selecting it. And then we can use this to simply select a circular or elliptical area anywhere on the canvas. Now, if you want a perfect circle, you can hold shift while dragging and that will keep the height and width ratios linked. And if you want to make your life a little bit easier, we can also hold Alt or Option and drag out from a center point rather than from the top corner. If we hold Shift and Alt Option together, then we can pull a perfect circle from a center point, just like that. And then we could use that selection to create a quick layer mask. So if I wanted to have the floor area here, I could simply use that selection, go to one of my textures, choose one of these, and there we have a circular floor. Apply a stroke as usual, and that's really all you need to do. Now, you can also use this tool for creating walls. So what I would do here is, again, I'm going to hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and drag out. And that's going to give me the outside of my wall. And then you can see these four little symbols at the top of the screen. The first one is Create New Selection. So with that selected, if I drag somewhere else, it's going to delete the previous selection and make a new one. If I use this second one here, which is Add, it's going to add the two together. So maybe if I draw another circle here, it's going to combine the two. And that selection is now a kind of figure eight. Or I can use the third one here. And that's going to be subtract selection. So if I go out from the center again, but don't go quite to the edge, you can see if I zoom in that I have just this outer ring selected. And I could then use that as a layer mask to set up a wall. So let's just apply our regular stroke and bevel emboss to that. So that is one way that you could create circular walls or circular parts of walls, but it's not going to be the easiest way and not going to give you the most control. So it's not what I'm going to recommend. Instead, we're going to go to option two. Option two is the elliptical shape tool. You can find that down at the bottom of the tools panel right here. We're going to get the ellipse tool. And this is going to allow us to draw a perfect ellipse that already has a stroke applied. And we're going to want to make sure we've got some of these settings correct first. So up the top, we're going to make sure our fill is set to nothing, which is this white box with a red stroke through it. Our stroke, which is the outline, set to black or whatever color you want to use. And then our stroke thickness set to whatever thickness you want your walls to be. I normally go around 40 or 50 pixels. We'll go for 40 for now. And then finally, your stroke alignment here. This gives you some options so you can have dashed lines, but we're going to go with a solid line for now. But the most important thing we want to look at is the alignment here. And this is going to give you three options. You can see them in more detail if you click more options. Your options are inside, center, and outside. Make sure it's set to center. You can just do that by going to the middle option here. Then with all those selections set up, I'm going to turn my grid back on. And similarly to the marquee tool, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and Shift. And I'm just going to drag out from the center. Now this looks exactly like the marquee tool until I let go. And you'll see it instantly applies that 40 pixel stroke to the line. And because we pick center, it's equidistant either side of it. Now that we have that set up, we can use that for our layer mask. But there's one thing we have to do first. You'll see if I just hit Command or Control and click on the ellipse here, it's going to select the whole circle. But that's not what I want. I want it to select the stroke and not the center area. So first of all, we need to right click on the ellipse. 
and go to rasterize layer. Now it's no longer a shape, it's just a simple image. So if I hold command control again and click on the ellipse, you can see we've just selected that black area. So I'll turn the ellipse off, we don't need it anymore, and I can use that selection to create my layer mask. Apply the stroke, apply our bevel emboss, and there we go, very quick wall. Now that obviously gives you much more control than using the elliptical marquee tool and adding and selecting because you can set the exact pixel width without having to judge it by eye. You can also cut up the parts of the ellipse and move them around. So if you just want a semicircle or a quarter circle, then you just remove the parts of the circle that you don't want before you set it as a layer mask. Now there's a bit more that we can do with the shape tool and we're gonna talk about that in option three. Option three is merging shapes. So you can see in the top right corner, I've got this little room that's kind of a combination of some squared walls and some semicircular walls. And a very quick way that I can make that shape is using the shape tool. This time I'm gonna start with the rectangle tool, not the ellipse tool. I'm gonna to check that all of my options are the same. So we've got no fill, black stroke, 40 pixels, and alignment set to center. Then using my grid, I'm just gonna draw the square part in first. Then once we've got that in place, I'll go and grab the ellipse tool and I will draw a circle that lines up with each of these semicircular areas. Now, obviously that's too much information. I don't want all those lines there. There's lots that I need to delete. And I could rasterize all of those and edit them separately using the eraser tool or the selection tool, but that's gonna take a while and it's also not gonna be very accurate. What I can do instead is simply select all of these shapes in my layer panel. So I've got the three ellipses and the rectangle. You can do that by holding command and clicking on each of them or clicking the top one, holding shift and then clicking the bottom one. Then with all of those selected, I'm gonna right click on one of them and I'm gonna to go to merge shapes over here. And basically that's gonna get rid of any information that's inside, it's just gonna keep that outline. So I now have the exact shape that I wanted. Again, I can simply rasterize that or if you think you might want to make changes to it later, we can duplicate it and rasterize the duplicated version and then turn them both off. I will hit Command or Control, hold it down while I click on the layer icon for this shape. And again, you can see that gives me the selection I want. I'll go to my layer mask for the wall and I'll just simply fill that with white so it will reveal that area on the layer mask. And we very quickly have a more complex shape. I'll quickly do the same thing again for the shape on the bottom. Draw my rectangle, get my ellipses, put them in place, select all four shapes and merge them. Then rasterize that shape, select it by holding command and clicking on it, hide it because I no longer need it, and then filling the selection on the layer mask with white. So the last thing we're gonna look at in this video is how to create these more complex shapes that have a variety of different curves and straight lines in them. That'll be option four. Option four is gonna be using the pen tool. This is gonna be a bit more complex, but it's gonna give you way more control over the shapes that you have on your battle map. And I'll walk you through all the basics of it now. So the pen tool, you can find over in the tool panel again, and you can see there's lots of different options for it, but we're just gonna use the basic one to start with. Now we just need to make sure that this is set to path, not shape, that's gonna be important later. But the main thing you need to know about the pen tool is it essentially creates a series of straight lines and curves between points that you put on your canvas. To create a straight line, we simply just click in one place, that creates what's called an anchor, and then we click in another place. And you can see this blue line between the two. I can do that again here, so we now have an angle. To create a curve, we're going to set our second point at the end of the curve, which is actually here. This is two curves because it changes direction. This time we're gonna click and then drag, and that blue line is going to curve. The more I drag, the more it's going to curve. Now we can use the grids here to help us create nice even curves. So you can see that the first point and the second point are opposite sides of one grid square. So if I drag another grid square up, that's gonna make that a perfect curve. So if you count the number of squares that you're going and then duplicate that and go that same distance again, that's gonna give you a perfect curve as though it were part of a circle. 
Then once we've got the first curve here in place, I can simply click this point here and it's gonna mirror that for me. Then I can go around, click again to create a straight line, click and drag to create the curve, click again to mirror it. Now you can see this next curve is a bit more shallow. We're not going for a perfect semi or quarter circle. So here I'm again gonna click the point where the curve changes direction and I'm gonna drag my points outwards so that they create a tangent with this center line. Now you can adjust this to wherever you need it. For this curve, I think somewhere like this should do. Again, you can use the grids to help you. Because I've gone down two subsections of my grid, I've also gone along eight, but I've gone down two, I'm then gonna go further two by two for this diagonal. Once I've got that first curve in place, again, I can just click here and it will mirror it for me. Then I'm just gonna go around and do the same thing for the bottom half. So we'll click for the straight line, click and drag along the tangent to make the shallow curve, click here to mirror it, click and drag along the vertical to create the perfect curve, and then mirror it, click again for the straight line, click and drag, click to mirror it, and then click here to finish my path. Now that we have that set up, I can show you another advantage of using the pen tool and paths over the shapes or the marquee tool. So if you open up the paths panel, if you don't have that, you can go to window and paths. And then you'll see here it says work path. This is the path that we currently have selected. If I double click on that, it will allow me to save the path. So I'm gonna call this curve path one. And now I have that saved. So if I click away, I can come back to it and it's always gonna be there. So if I need to reuse it later on or if I want to edit it, it's always there in the background. And as you know, I really like to use a non-destructive workflow. So this gives us much more control, not only now, but later on if we need to make edits. And I'll quickly show you how you can make edits to these shapes if you need to. So with my saved path selected, I can click anywhere along this blue line and it's gonna add a new anchor point. So I'll just put one right in the middle here. Maybe I will actually wanna make this wall curved. Then holding Command or Control, I can click that anchor point and drag it outwards. So maybe we'll go out to there. But I don't particularly like that curve. So I can grab the adjustment points at the end here, also holding Command or Control and drag that out. Do the same on the other side. And now I have a nice curve at the top of this shape. We can also remove points from the line so with the pen tool still selected, all of this is done with the pen tool, we can just go and click on one of these anchor points that we no longer want and it will delete it. You'll see a little minus sign will come up next to the icon. So if we remove this one and this one, no, look, that straight line section is no longer there and this becomes a continuous curve. We'll do the same on the bottom. And there we go, we've made some adjustments to our shape. I'll go back, make sure it's selected and I'm gonna go back over to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to choose a brush. This is the brush that we're going to use to create the line that follows this path. So you could use your square brush, but you'll find as it goes round corners, the line gets thicker because the square doesn't rotate to follow the path. Instead, what I normally do is use the round brush because that's gonna be a continuous thickness the whole way along. Then we want to set the thickness for it. So we used 40 points before, we'll do the same here. And now I'm gonna go back to my paths tool, making sure I'm on that new layer. I'm going to right click on this path and I'm gonna to go to stroke path. It will ask you to choose which tool to use. We want to use the brush. And you'll see that's now created a 40 pixel stroke the whole way around the path. So exactly the same as before. We can turn that off. We don't need that path selected anymore, so we can click away from it. And then we can hold Command or Control, click on the layer icon to select that path, and then add that to our wall layer mask. And we have a wall with a whole bunch of nice curves in it that we definitely couldn't have drawn easily, either freehand or using the shape tool or the marquee tool. Now, another advantage of having paths, if I go over to it, and this time hold Command Control, we do this a lot, and click on the icon, it's gonna select the inside of that path. So I now have a layer mask that I can use for my floor texture. So let's go and grab a different texture for the floor. 
So this is saving you a whole bunch of time, whereas normally we would have to go back in and select these areas using either our marquee tool or whatever selection tool you prefer to use, and then adding that to our layer mask. So all of this is not only helping us work non-destructively, but it's speeding up our workflow. As you can see, I couldn't even finish it before I was done talking. So that probably seemed like a lot. The pen tool can be a little intimidating the first time you use it, but the best thing to do is just play around with it and you will figure it out. I'll go over another example now around this outer floor area, and I will also link to a video by PHLearn who go over all the intricacies of the pendle in more detail and explain it better than I've done. You can find that in the description below. So very quickly, I am going to turn my grid back on. I'm going to select my pen tool, and I will just go around and make the selection for this particular area. So we're following the tangent there again. Click again to mirror it. We can just go around the outside of this because this floor is going to be underneath the other one. So anywhere where my curve is an S shape, you've got to click that center point. You can't just go to the end point because it's two curves. It changes direction. Uh, we're just clicking for our straight lines. Very simple. Center of the S curve click to the end to mirror it and finish the shape. Now, if we go over to my paths, you can see this has created a new work path. I can save this one again, so we'll call it curve path two. And this time I don't need to stroke around it. I just need that selection for the layer mask of my floor. So I'm gonna hold control, click on it to select that center area. And then we will make a new floor underneath. So there we have it, four simple options for creating curve shapes on your battle map. We have the elliptical tool, the shape tool, merge shapes and the pen tool. Now, if all that seemed like a lot and you actually just want to skip making the battle maps and just get a bunch of pre-made ones, you can go over to my Patreon where I have thousands of pre-made battle maps and assets to customize them. Link for that is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.